Noong 1938, nagturo siya sa Universidad ng Santo Tomas at noong taong din iyon, ikinasal siya kay Marina Reyes, isang tanyag na fashion designer at pamangkin ni Nicanor Reyes sa Shanghai, China. When he did the house of um, um, uh, Mr. Yulo, my mom was making clothes for Mrs. Yulo. They were not married, no? So, um, and daddy was almost 40 already that time. Eh? So, Mr. and Mrs. Yulo decided that the two should marry. Ah, so matchmaking. Matchmaking, oh, matchmaker. So, then, I don't know, what happened, but they got married. Itinaguyod ni Pablo, gamit ang kanyang mga disenyo, ang pagpapahalaga sa mga taal na katangian ng mga materyales. He famously declared, Whenever one uses adobe stones, he must design for adobe. When he uses steel, the design must be in such a way as to show the slenderness of the material. In short, respect of material is essential. To fake is ugly. After the war, Manila and its surroundings were reduced to rubble. The post-war years welcomed the radical and austere aesthetic of modernism as a response to the growing and pressing need to return to normality. Nang makamit ng Pilipinas ang kasarinlan noong 1946, niyakap ni Pablo ang modernismo upang ipahayag ang hangarin ng malayang lipunan. Gamit ang brisole or sunbreaker, mga pier screen at glass wall, inankop ni Pablo ang bagong istilong ito sa tropikal na kapaligiran. Marahil, lingid man sa kanyang kamalayan, malaki ang naging ambag ng kanyang mga sinihan sa muling pagbangon ng maraming Pilipino mula sa trauma ng digmaan. In the Kapitan Luis Gonzaga Building, horizontal slabs project from ceiling and window sill height, while vertical fins of half-story height are staggered, creating a contrast between continuous horizontal planes and broken vertical planes. I think one of the most, well, for me, beautiful building he made is in front of, um, of Ideal. What is Gonzaga that? Gonzaga building. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, no, so the Gonzaga building no, started a mania for mm. brisole. Siya yung yeah. introduced ng, ano, no, ng, ng sun shading device. Yes. No? Uh -huh. uh, it's a way to tropicalize no, yung modern architecture. Mm -hmm. Kasi modern architecture was in vogue no, in the 1950s, mm -hmm. but it is not compliant with our tropical yes. climate. Yes. So that's why he introduced no, yung mga vertical and horizontal sun shading devices mm -hmm. dun sa building na yun. Mm -hmm. And I think my dad was a very practical man, diba? Like, mm. very practical. And he, he said, you know, people forget, like what I said before, that we're living in the tropics. Why are you going to have an enclosed house? No, it should be open like this. Kasabay rin ng panahong ito, ang urban sprawl, o pag-usbong ng suburban development sa mga karatig bayan ng Maynila. Malaki ang naging impluensya ng prairie style ng arkitektong si Frank Lloyd Wright sa disenyo ng mga tahanang umusbong sa bansa ng mga panahong iyon. Sa istilong ito, makikita ang pagbuwag ng hangganan ng mga espasyong panloob at panlabas, ang paggamit ng mga materyal sa paraang mapapatingkad ang angking katangian nito at ang pagbubuklod ng mga espasyong panloob o paggamit ng open plan. Makikita rin ang naging impluensya ng prairie style sa pamamaraan ng pagdidisenyo ni Pablo Antonio ng mga tahanan pagkatapos ng digmaan. Nandito tayo ngayon sa bahay ni Pablo Antonio, isang national artist for architecture. Ang bahay na to itinayuman noong 1948. Marami tayong makikita ang prinsipyo na still magagamit pa rin natin sa ating mga bahay ngayon. Ang bahay na to ay naging pattern ano, ng mga bahay noong 1950s. Ito yung mga bahay na tinatawag natin bungalow. So samahan nyo ako, tignan natin ang bahay ni Pablo Antonio. The low building profile of Antonio's house 
its use of large, slanting screens and clerestory windows, and wide overhanging eaves make the house cool and airy. Sitting on a sprawling property surrounded by a lush garden, the house is an oasis, despite being in the middle of a bustling city. The house features an open plan layout and is dotted by pocket gardens and ponds which add to the tropical feel of the interiors. With an amazingly prolific output of 60 residences, 48 commercial and industrial buildings, 11 theaters, 6 schools, and 30 other structures of various types, Antonio's works express harmony, simplicity, organic beauty, natural integrity, and unity, articulating his moral and aesthetic sense. My dad could make any kind of house. He could do anything, whatever the client wanted. Just to give an example, when he, someone came here and then told my dad, but Mr. Antonio, when are you going to finish your house? Mm -hmm. Because it's not painted. Mm -hmm. So my, my dad said, but that is the look, no? And, uh, but he told uh, the client, said she didn't want something like this. So my dad said, we can sit down, you tell me what you want, I can make a house that you want. So that's where I got the idea that he said that I can do what you like. You know, this client wants me to make the house, everything, he doesn't want to be bothered. Mr. Antonio, you do everything. And my dad said, no, I will be the architect, but we have to have a contractor because that is the check and balance. And also before, uh, people will be standing here, aircon, uh, TV. And I said, but oh, daddy, they're sending, no, no, return that, return all of that. Because I'm only sticking to one contractor. Mm -hmm. My father did not really become very, very, very rich because he did not want to get um, a percentage yeah, yeah. or like that. No, he was a man of uh, principle, talaga. Pumanaw si Pablo Antonio noong 1974, matapos atakihin sa puso at inilibing siya sa Manila Memorial Park. Hinirang siya bilang pambansang alagad ng sining para sa arkitektura noong 1976 bilang pagkilala sa kanyang naging ambag sa pag-unlad ng arkitekturang Filipino. My father's structure was so well built that they really had a hard time mm -hmm. to tear down. They themselves told me to tear it down because it was so well uh, made. Talagang buhos lahat. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm really for conserving all the buildings, not necessarily made by my dad, because that's where we came from. History, that's why I told them. For me, the works of Nakpil, Loxin, whoever, should be protected. The same way I would protect my father's work, because like Loxin's um, uh, idol was my dad. So, and I think a lot of architects also, looked up to him because he was really an architect's architect. So no other work except architect. He didn't do anything else. He's really an, an architect, period. <laughs> and a very good father and, you know, a, a very good husband and all of that. He's a very family man. So, but I think, I would, I think it would not be fair if he, to say if he had other things, no. Antonio's life and works resonated the very qualities of his architecture, authentic, simple, and modest, yet unpredictable, breathtaking, and glorious. Antonio's inspirational transformation from an impoverished orphan to an architectural icon is a rags-to-riches story worthy of screening in one of the many cinema palaces he designed. Nagdisenyo si Pablo Antonio na mga espasyo at gusaling tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng kanyang panahon. Lumikha siya ng mga lunang kumakatawan at nagbibigay buhay sa diwa at kamalayan ng lipunang kumawala mula sa tanikala ng panunupil ng kolonyalismo. Sa paraang ito, naging bahagi siya ng pagbuo ng sambayanang Pilipino. Nagustuhan niyo bang episode na to? For more updates, subscribe to my channel.